first um, because this may not be one of the one of my comments may not be to you guys um, who is in charge of the um, Black Friday Santa arrival party or is borough council involved uh, Jeff Tech okay. the business authority generally submits a mass gathering permit to borough council and then borough council uh, is required to approve uh, I should say approve a prior uh, Required to review mass gatherings and then make a determination if it entails closing any roadways. In this instance, it did, so council review. Okay, but um, come up with the creative ideas of actually propose. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, just for point of reference, um, our business was off 30% because it was taken from State Street and put in front of the courthouse. And I did a, can a very informal canvassing of businesses up and down State Street, and they were not happy. Um, so business authority and I have from my background in advertising and marketing I have a lot of ideas on how it is beneficial for the retail district Black Friday as you know is supposed to be the big day and it really hurt um, the other reason I'm here is I as you know have been involved with the Third Street project and I am a member of the Burmese Lake Country Club um, this has been an issue of I grew up in this area, so I remember when that was a two-way road. Um, I would really like to see more cooperation between the two opposing parties in the government in regards to this, Brimble's Lake and also the borough, because I feel there's a lot of um, posturing and stalemating, and as a resident, this is not helping anybody, and as a business person, it's really not helping. Uh, get this project along, do not lose the funding, we don't have that much money in the government anyway. So if they've got it for us, let's take it and let's uh, make some you know, executive leadership decisions to try and compromise and make this the best thing for everybody because there is going to be a point of contention no matter what. It's not going to be a perfect roadway for either party. But don't lose the funding. Don't lose this opportunity. And my final comment is in regards to Wawa. 
again, as a business person, opportunity comes along. And if you don't take it, it goes away. Wawa has gone away. And I just wanted to make a formal statement that I'm really sorry to see that. They are an amazing community citizen. And I think we really miss the boat on this one. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Nesbitt. Can I just follow up with a question on the, uh, on the movement of Santa's arrival? I yes. think there was a, Jeff, can you uh, weigh in on this, uh, if you know, um, wasn't there an issue of public safety and why it was moved? I, 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 I can say that. Yeah, yeah would you please? Yeah, well, uh, the, the, well, both the police department and fire company uh, requested that we have it on State Street, or I'm sorry, on Hunt Street. Um, we're, now the event's over, uh, we're reviewing it, but the, it, it's been a public safety issue in their eyes for many years. Um, they just thought it's gotten so big right. that they suggested that it work. Now, having said that, we certainly understand your concerns. Uh, so we're looking at it next year to see, and there will be meetings and there will be discussions. Oh, would you please you include question? me in those? Because, I, um, again, it's, it's the same thing that happens with every small town. You have something that starts off a certain way, and then it gets bigger and bigger if it's successful, which is what you want. But you have to constantly go back and revisit it. The, the idea of moving it off of State Street was an attempt to try and answer those issues that everybody was concerned about. But when I talked with the police department about it on that night, they said it was even more of a nightmare up there, the policeman that I was talking to on that sidewalk, because it was a wider expanse of people in a much less lit area. They really liked it more contained like it was, even though it was a crowd issue. So there are other ways of doing, as we know, with all the crowds we have for the food festival and all the crowds that we have for Dining Under the Stars and for the sidewalk sales, there is a way of crowd control on State Street. So put adding Santa into that mix can be done on State Street and still take care of those crowd issues and the safety issues. Uh, businesses do not mind. Uh, one of the issues that was addressed to me or said to me uh, by Zubair was that the businesses were upset that their doors were blocked by Santa's wait, the people waiting for Santa. And I went through all those businesses along those areas where they would have been blocked, and they all said, are you kidding? It's only two hours. Look at all the people it brings in. They're right at our door. As soon as Santa's done, they turn around and they walk into our stores. In fact, this gentleman that is in Quincy's says it's actually a little bit of a nightmare for him. He loves all the people, but they bring all their kids in. And as any of you know, Quincy's has multiple breakable items, <laughs> all at low level kids like a kid hurting. So um, safety, yes, you, but you can redesign it for safety. Um, it was really a shame that they didn't see the spectacular lighting of the tree and the lights. I mean, that is an amazing tradition, and not many um, towns do that. That yeah, was an awkward moment. Yes. I had to announce it. And, oh. and everybody, you know, and I, yeah. I, I kind of I lived it, obviously. Well, we went through, my son and I went through handing out flyers saying, please come back to media, because we were so afraid that they would disperse and not come back into town, and that's exactly what happened. Okay, I think you should be part of the discussion. I would like to be. All right, thank you. Does anyone else wish to come before council at this time? Just a note. David. David Miller, I-81 of Crest Lane, Media, Pennsylvania. Uh, last time we talked uh, was in, uh, I guess... I that's up our problem. Yeah, I'm just, sorry? If we had, if, just for good. For purpose of accuracy, because we do need to have an accurate record, I believe that the residence is an upper problem. Well. Uh, my address is David Miller, 981 Oak Crest Lane, Media, Pennsylvania, 19063. That's how you mail. Uh, that's how I use as a return address. That's how things are mailed to me. You get your tax bill from the borough? Oh, yeah. We get taxes. A tax bill from the borough. Right, yes. Let's, 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 Mr. Miller, please address council. Okay. Last time we talked, uh, I suggested as a uh, possible uh, 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 way of addressing the two-way, one-way road possibility that uh, the, the road could be uh, used or, or marked as a yield to oncoming traffic. I was told specifically by several of, the, of you members that uh, Pennsylvania does not allow that anymore. They don't allow construction of a, of a, a road that has... Uh, a new road that has uh, a, a yield to oncoming traffic. I don't think that's exactly what was said, but please go ahead. Okay, so I perceived that, so therefore I figured uh, inquiring minds have to inquire. So I checked with PennDOT. I wrote uh, an email letter to uh, PennDOT, and Timothy Stevens returned 
my uh, my email, and I'll tell you what I wrote to him so you'll get the full, the full picture here. Hi, is there a stipulation that PennDOT will never construct or reconstruct a public roadway that is, re that, oh, that is or requires one-way traffic with yield to oncoming traffic due to narrow availab availab availability of service? This situation is due to reconstruction Dam, 3rd Street, uh, Dam Bridge, and Media PA. He gets back to me. Your inquiry was directed to my attention as Media's 3rd Street Dam Spillway Bridge project is being developed under my oversight. Please note that Media Borough is the sponsor of the project and PennDOT is working with the borough to develop the design of their project. On May 18th of 2012, the borough indicated how they would like the project to proceed. See attached correspondence. The attached correspondence is uh, a letter um, from uh, Mr. Stevenson, or to Mr. Stevenson, uh, dated May 18, 2012. And uh, it, it uh, second sentence is, during their meeting of May 17, 2012, a vote of 5 to 2, Borough Council adopted the following motion to be consistent with the stipulation and order dated May 26, 2011. So I said, maybe I should look at that. And that's on your website. So basically, down on uh, about three quarters of the way down on page one, the current design could include sidewalks and parking. Sidewalks must be connected to adjacent path or sidewalks. Bike lane must be connected to adjacent bike path. Interesting because there are no sidewalks that actually come down to that bridge on the media side, nor are there any sidewalks anywhere near on the Upper Providence side. So that, that could present a problem. Mr. Miller, if you don't mind, um, we are half an hour uh, into our allotted time. Can you give us a What is the question you wish us to address? I, I'm, I, I, will, I have a question. I think, it, no, I think it would be helpful if we understood what the question was so we can understand how to place this information you're giving us. Is it possible that maybe you don't want to hear this? No, it's not. Okay, then I will continue. I Could the road, this is guidelines and ideas regular, uh, related to the 3rd Street Bridge, July 31, 2011. Could the re road be made one way into borough, both reducing the width of the dam and minimizing traffic noise? And the answer is, although PennDOT guidelines would allow a one-way roadway, the decision to reconstruct dam roadway as a two-lane thoroughfare were made in 1998 in conjunction with securing funding for the project. Could the bridge be a one-lane? This is paragraph three. Mr. Could the President, bridge be can we, can we have, begin? Can we have the question called, or uh, otherwise I believe that this, well, we would like to know what the question is. The question is, what, what, what are we... Uh, what are we worried about? Because it appears as though, based on PennDOT and these uh, findings, that uh, it uh, it should be a one-lane or two-lane bridge. Um, uh, I, I actually, I'm, I'm a bit lost. So am I. I'm well, not that's sure why you. That's why I have to continue with what I have to say. Uh, if you don't want to hear it, Mr. Miller, we have talked about this subject for the past 12 months. I know we that. have we have invited everyone who wished to come forward to come forward and say their piece, and many of them did. That's many right. did more than once, and I think you're among those. And we we, we welcome you to do so. I, I think, in the interest of brevity, it would be helpful to this council if you got to the point. That's what we're asking. Please get to the point, Mr. President. Could I ask our engineer a question? I think I know questions. Please go ahead, ask the question, Mr. Engineer. Based on your professional knowledge representing, I don't know how many municipalities in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Correct me if I'm wrong, I've heard it, I believe you say that new construction with funds provided by the state, that you cannot have a two-way, as what Mr. Miller is, is suggesting, a one-way, a one-lane bridge that is accessible in two different directions. Yes, that was directly asked to PennDOT. I believe Mr. Stevens was present. He may have also provided the answer. I was present at that meeting. Mr. Stevenson was there. We asked that question directly, and the answer was in the negative. They that's, not that's not, that, based on the conversation that I had with Mr. Stevenson, that was not the case. He said it could be, it could be. Mr. Mr. Uh, Miller, I, I understand that you're telling us your conversation. I'm just telling you what our conversation was. So you don't want to hear my conversation. conversation. 
I think we've heard your conversation. No, you have. Um, Mr. Miller, if, if that's, do you have anything else you wish to say before this council? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, please okay. say. Okay. I will quote this right here, and then I will sit down. Uh, media residents weighed in on the re uh, rehabilitation. Will residents be able to vote on the, on the final plans? That was a question was proposed by uh, Lisa Farrah Kelly. Borough can choose the type of roadway one way or two way. Upper Providence must concur with Borough since it is connected to the roadway. And in talking to um, Tom McFadden from Upper, Bur uh, Upper Providence Council, he says no way that's going to happen. So therefore, um, people that want to move this on and get over this, it's not going to happen because obviously there is a stalemate between what you folks are thinking and what is really for the good of both communities. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. As I said before, we do not have cheering at these meetings. This is not a sport. Cheering leads to jeering. Um, yes, Ms. Barsetti. Thank you. Uh, Tracy Barsetti is at 541 Hillendale Road. Um, and I'd like to follow Mr. Miller um, speaking of, on behalf of a potential two-way option over 3rd Street. Um, some additional thoughts that some community members have, and myself had discussed or batted around. Um, that going back to Judge Proud's, um, how should I say, request for the three parties that were part of the 2011 stipulation, to kind of get together and see if something or anything can be worked out. Um, some of the people who are friends of Glen Providence Park um, have also submitted, hmm, maybe this is something we need to bat around further. Um, local traffic only signs that say do not enter. Um, in the area that I come from in Springfield, there were several of them where there were time constrained hours where you cannot go on a specific roadway. So you could make time constrained hours that traffic could not go back and forth as a two-way option. Um, or do not enter local traffic only, which deters motorists who are not local and not from the area from turning down that roadway. Just a couple of options that others have expressed, maybe this is a way to come to Jesus and everybody sit down at the table. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Far Savage. I think that our engineer has a term that he uses for those local traffic only signs. Uh, and what is that term, Mr. Engineer? Well, there's a few of them. Is, is I just uh, I think we just spoke. Is it tells a lot of people that this is a shortcut. Uh, it's a policing problem, and before I, I know the borough would take any further, that would be something we'd have to speak with the police and a lot of enforcement for those type of signs. We did consider that as far as that that was a uh, concern of ours. Um, but understand that one of the major issues in our decision was that of cost. A bigger dam costs more money. And if putting local traffic only signs on a two lane bridge still leaves us with greater cost than a one lane bridge. So I understand your position, the traffic control, but there are other things that motivated our decision, including uh, impact on the park as well as the overall cost of the project. We would like to be good stewards of public money and reduce the cost of the project. A one lane, a dam that, that accommodates one lane is going to be smaller than a dam that accommodates two lanes. It will cost less. Um, anyone else who wishes to come forward? Mr. Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, James Cunningham, 321 North Edgemont Street. I'll be quick. I have a couple of quick questions about Third Street Bridge situation. But first, um, why was the contractor who was repaving streets in the central business district allowed to rip and tear these streets up a week before Christmas. Mm. That's never happened in all my memory of uh, my involvement with our council. This is the latest this has ever been done, and if it was this late for whatever the reasons, why couldn't it have been put off another week or so? <clears throat> because uh, going up and down State Street last weekend, all I heard from merchants I talked to was complaints about this is the time we, we do a good amount of a high percentage of our business um, for the year. This is where we make a lot of our profit. And we've got streets torn up, traffic backed up, back down Media Hill. People can't find parking spaces. So 
Is there any logical reason why the contractor had to be in during that period? Mr. Robinson. Yeah, uh, Jim, to be candid, part of my report was I was going to apologize. We had significant issues with our, our contractor this year. Uh, he was under contract in which he had to have the project done by the 12th of, or excuse me, 13th of, this, of December. Uh, there were concerns, and you know, since you sat on council for a long time, you may have remembered that plants, if, if the temperature started to drop, the plants would <coughs> shut down. Uh, I am not happy. Uh, our engineer is not happy. Our, everyone is not happy. Uh, there will be significant changes to the way our contract, or excuse me, our RFP is put out for 2013. Uh, and our current contractor is, it will be in the process of having some discussions with myself and, and the engineer. And I do, you know, apologize. We did all that we could do. We did have business owners come and contact us and ask us to pave at certain times in certain locations. And we did exactly what these business people asked uh, with regarding Baker Street. Uh, so it was not as if we just came in willy-nilly. Uh, they were actually scheduled for different times and at the request of uh, business owners and I guess a, a significant percentage of business owners, uh, we moved or we moved paving from different areas to accommodate or to attempt to accommodate. So. You know, when, when there's an issue, hey, yes, you're absolutely right. It was a bad time, uh, but the other alternative was not to have it done at all. Uh, very good indication is as of right now, those plants will not be operating, and there's a very good possibility if we continue with cold weather that they won't, will not be operating. So, no, and I will take, you know, I will take the hit on this one. I do apologize. Uh, he was to come out at an earlier time this year was unable to do it, and then after that point, it was letter after letter, phone call after phone call, promise after promise, that he was going to come. So, uh, you know, if someone wants to take the hit, I will be glad to take the hit. So we'll have a better handle on it next year. We will definitely have a better handle on it next year. Okay, fine. Third Street, back to the Third Street Bridge. Uh, Mr. President, back in the uh, workshop meeting of September, before you all made the decision about the one-lane situation, um, I had asked, I said, have you talked up with Providence Township about this matter? You said no. I said, did you talk to our planning commission? You said no. Uh, you and I were both at the planning commission meeting uh, this month. They voted four to one to ask council to submit the plans for the bridge as projected to them for review. No. Yes, they did. Planning? This yeah, planning. December's yeah. planning meeting? Yes. They did not take a vote yeah. on that at all. In fact, they, they That's not what Mr. Jeffries told me. Well, I guess you you stayed at the whole meeting? I was there for the entire time. Well, he told me they could made a you, motion. Could, could you repeat what the nature of the motion was again? Maybe I misunderstood. They requested the council submit to them the plans for the bridge to be reviewed. Um, no. There, there are no plans, actually. Well, I know that, but when the plans are prepared. Oh, like the concept, right now we're talking about the conceptual plan. No, 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 no that's, that, that, that's right. I misunderstood you. I, I may have misunderstood you to say that they had asked that current plans be provided to them. And there are, there, there are no current plans. Well, I, know, I realize that. But the, the, you're going to submit to them then the conceptual ideas right now, right? Uh, the conceptual ideas? Yeah, what, what you're talking about, one way, one lane bridge versus a two lane, two way bridge. What they asked to do is be kept in the loop once okay. plans become available. Okay, well if you're going to do that, then why not submit to them, for their opinion, the idea of a one-lane, one-way bridge versus a two-lane, two-way bridge, since they, under state law, have the right to review plans, suggestions, and act as advisory arm to Borough, to Borough Council. You, you, you all like to talk to people that agree with you. Here's an independent body has no axe to grind, and I think it would be a good idea if you submitted the plans to them. And I would hope Council in fact, would make a motion to do just that and ask them to review the situation. Well, Mr. Cunningham, I was there for the entire meeting, you were not. No, and as, I, you're, as you recall at the beginning of the meeting, I indicated to them that if that was their wish, I would be happy to take that to council. After you left, they informed me that they did not wish to weigh in on that question unanimously. There are representatives under state law, they review development and planning, and they're not interested in a major 
thoroughfare into, into that media borough, they have no interest, then they all ought to get off and resign because that's their duty. But aside from that, Your Honor, question. At the September meeting, when the one lane, one way bridge was approved, uh, the, the motion, I am told that you, as public, since you're in charge of public safety, you are going to make a statement supporting, because of public safety, a two lane, two way bridge. Mm -hmm. And you had a statement at the time you were going to read, you didn't read it, and someone asked you about this, and you said, well, I didn't read it because nobody asked me. No, I didn't have a statement. You never had a statement I, I that you were opinion, going to... I have an opinion, and I'm happy to share that with you. In my opinion, uh, since the beginning, and I don't remember whether you were on council in 1997 when we put together the meeting to try to get the funding for it. Right. And it was, a, it was teamwork from the county, from the state, Bridge Administration. Tom, Tom Killian just took over as chairman. And it was decided that we're all going to go jointly, Leonard Feld, uh, Matt Ryan, et cetera, and it worked. And we got the funding, and then years went by, and things happened, and it never happened. Um, I had always been for a two-lane, two-way, and however, I do think that uh, Terry and his group presented a nice, they presented an alternative that I at least listened to. And what I found out was that in the end, if anything was going to happen, it had to be a compromise, because you, you had three different opinions on this council. There was nothing that was going to get four votes. So the only uh, the only decision that was going to get four votes was what happened. The, uh, the one lane, one way, got four votes. And um, Brian, you and I talked about this a lot. And it was a compromise. And otherwise, we'd still be sitting here talking about it. There would be no decisions. So, for the record, you're not in favor of a two-way, two-lane bridge. Is that correct? I'm in favor of working together, which I thought this council did to come up with uh, something that would get five votes, which it did. Uh, that was a compromise. I was absolutely for it, and I know who you're talking about that uh, says I said that, but I, I never had a statement to read. I was always going to give my opinion if asked, and if I had a vote, I was going to vote for it, for what was a compromise. Okay. And right. I interacted with council members. Okay. 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 I, I, I understand. Do you have anything else you wish to address one, council? One last question. Approximately four months ago, Mr. President, you had an extensive conversation with District Justice Nicholas Lippincott, who represents that portion of Upper Providence where Ridley Creek Road and Baltimore Pike intersect. So, I, but before that, before you begin and you go any further, uh, uh, Judge Lippincott was here in this room for about a couple of minutes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Robinson was here. Um, and there were a few words that were spoken, but I don't think anything more than that. I would not characterize what happened as an extensive conversation with you, Mr. Robinson. No. Well, he seems to recall an extensive conversation with you in which he indicated, since he has to deal with all these terrible traffic problems and accidents down at the intersection of the road and Pike, that he thought how strongly it was that the bridge should be two-way, two-lane to relieve the pressure, transportation pressure, and accident potential stand there at that intersection. And I you don't know, recall that. No, there, there was that. We that did, was me. We did discuss that. It was, it was Mr. That was Councilman Robinson. And, and, and Mr. And, and the judge, uh, I believe, was here not as a judge that evening, and he made that very clear, was here as a resident of Upper Province, but since he is a judge, he is a judge. Right. Uh, his issue was the left-hand turn from Ridley Creek Road to go on the Baltimore Pike. Which is all, yeah. So, sure. so if, and, and I think everyone understands where my position has been all along with regards to the Third Street Bridge, but here, you know, if, if in fact it was a one lane bridge coming from the Upper Providence Intermediate, that would completely eliminate the need of any resident from making a left hand turn off Ridley Creek Road, correct? I mean, I mean, no, I mean, that's not the point. I mean, if a person can come through media from Upper Province without going to Ridley Crook Road and making a left, that alleviates that problem, correct? Maybe yes, maybe not. How, how, okay, correct me, how, well, no, how's it, no, how's rather, it, rather, rather than engage in a debate yeah. about this point. Number two, you know, the other issue that he had was public safety. And as long as there is a road that goes across the dam that supports a pond, then we have the ability to have emergency traffic go east or west on that road. So that so that that does. If, yeah, if there's an emergency, you may, yeah, I, I I understand that, but 
So the judge I didn't. I have an extensive counsel present. He spoke to me. The judge asked about traffic going from Baltimore Pike, making a left on a Ridley Creek Road. If the position the majority of counsel took, that would satisfy that. And if the judge's other concern was emergency track or emergency vehicles getting over Providence, and that would and that one lane bridge would satisfy that. So I believe that the concerns that Judge Lippincott had was addressed by the majority of this council. Not the last conversation I had with him. Well, then, uh, which he which he related to me the discussion. But think of it as his point to me was I have to deal with all these accidents and it's foolish, foolish to cut off another ingress egress in and out of media for limited traffic when you've got these problems there. Okay. He just doesn't like them thrown down there. But okay, that's beside the point. But just one last thing. This is not a partisan issue. This is not Democrat versus Republican. And I'll give you an example. Well, it really, Monica, it is not. No, and I'll give you an example. I agree with you. I'll give you, an I'll give you an example of it. I was in the courthouse the other day, and a very prominent attorney who appears often before you and appears before our uh, planning commission said to me, you know something, Jim? Me and Burke Council stand on this whole thing. It's an embarrassment. By the way, he's a Democrat. I just thought you'd like to know that. Merry Christmas, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. I, 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 I'd only suggest that uh, there are as many opinions about this project as there are persons. Um, does anyone else wish to come before council at this time? Hey, well, let me wish you a happy holiday season. You know, get something a little positive out here. Um, Mr. Atkinson. Oh, Dylan Atkins, uh, Kirk Lane, Upper Province. But I work in media, so I am so I do pay media taxes. Actually, more than I realize when I look at my pay <laughs> um, But that's okay. You guys do a good job. And I like keeping it level. <laughs> um, I just want to make it absolutely clear. Obviously, my township has not made this clear. Being Upper Province, not everybody in Upper Province is in favor of two-way, and not every Republican is in favor of two-way. So y you are correct. It is not a partisan issue, or at least not for me. Um, I'll also say that. I think, as has been said here, I was going to say that I think we did overcome a lot of the major objections when you start talking about the emergency access and the no turn on the no left hand turn on the Baltimore pipe with the one way into town. Um, and then I did want to bring up, I wanted to applaud, uh, I believe it was Dawn, but I'm not sure, who had suggested that we keep track of the legal fees associated with this, you know, going forward in terms of anything. I would actually think that would be a great idea. I think transparency in government, especially with cost, is outstanding. But I'd like to suggest that people on our side, citizens, have no idea what these numbers are. I think we should put them in terms of percentage of total legal fees, legal fees this year versus last year, and legal fees as a percentage of the total cost of the project. I think that might shed a lot more light on the significance of the level of the fees that we're talking about. Um, and that ties right into the budget discussions this afternoon. Um, that, that's essentially uh, all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Have a great Thank you. Can I make one quick clarification on the legal fee question that I've been asking? And I think that's excellent, and I think you're right. Um, we can look at it in that term, too. But my specific question is that I want to keep very close tabs on extra legal fees that we're incurring because of the lawsuit. Um, I know that our legal fees that we incur through the normal progress of a project like this, I completely understand their place, and yes, we do need to track them as we track everything else. My particular interest in this, and, and that we're going to track closely, is what extra costs we're incurring because we're in this conflict with the two other parties, that or the one other party who's actually filed something against the borough. Because, as we all know, in my opinion, you know, we shouldn't be in this position because of the majority vote that happened in September. So that's my my big point is I want to keep track of extra costs that are occurred because and of the suit. Ms. Rowe, could I ask this question? If in fact this suit is misfounded, and then will you do you feel that by tracking this these numbers that we can use that information to also pursue the individual entity uh, that filed the suit? In my opinion, no, because in my opinion, they're right. Well, I mean, I mean as a member of council, though, there was a majority vote. You know that I'm, you know, I'm the odd man out here. No, I understand yeah, you know. what you're saying. But if you know, the position here is, if in fact we have ex we've we've uh, used taxpayer dollars for these fees, mm -hmm. and it's found that this suit was misfounded, 
you know, I assume that due to the fact that this is disturbing to you that we're using taxpayer dollars, mm -hmm. that you would have no issue with pursuing getting those taxpayer dollars back from the misuse, from the misfiling of the suit. I would have no issue with council taking on a vote to pursue that action. I don't know. It depends on the outcome of that. So you dust up, you want to see the money not spent for one reason, but if it's No, one. I don't want to see the money spent because I don't think we should have ever put ourselves in a position to be in this particular situation okay. to begin with. I think there's one of some clarity. Back. No, I think fine. there is some clarity. Back. Um, I'll just uh, remind everyone that cost was always a consideration in my decision. And as I recall, I think it was Benjamin Franklin, um, it's penny wise and pound foolish. Um, if, it, if by spending a few dollars on lawyers now, we are able to save the borough a lot more money, uh, I think that that's money well spent. Um, okay, so I feel like tonight is back to the future night. Uh, we seem to be uh, back with the Third Street, uh, Third Street Dam. Um, is there anybody else who's here who has a refreshing change of pace? <coughs> Thanks, Frank Shields. I'm the uh, president of the Media Upper Province Library. Uh, I live at 80 Old Mill Drive in the Media Upper Province. Um, tonight I'm going to uh, refreshing, I hope it's refreshing, speak uh, in, uh, in support of the library, obviously. Um, I've spoken to council, to uh, finance committee, to community development uh, in media here. I've also spoken in many times to Upper Province over the past two years about the, uh, uh, the re renovation project we have. Uh, and uh, I should point out that everyone in media uh, that I've spoken to has been very supportive, very helpful, extremely helpful in looking at all the alternatives that we could evaluate around this huge project. Um, but where we are now is uh, the result of that two-year effort, the result of all the input from media uh, residents, from council, from finance committee, and so forth. Although we're open still to alternatives every day of the week. In fact, just a few weeks ago, we continue to look at other alternatives. So I just wanted to point out a, a couple key points that, for the record, it's important to recognize that this building has been uh, cobbled together over 100 years. And in that 100-year period, it's indicative of the building in that, uh, over that time frame to have so much uh, distress and uh, a need for an upgrade. But as we evaluated it, there are six different levels in, in this building, six which uh, for handicapped and for elderly is very difficult to get around. In fact, the second floor is completely idle and vacant because of these issues. So as we evaluated it, it's really not possible just to have a quick fix. We have to have something that's more structural. So the, the plan that we put together that's in the library presents a plan that goes from six elevations to two, a first floor and a second floor with an elevator, so that everyone has access to the library, the disabled, the um, elderly, uh, and the children. Speaking of space, so we have a vacant second floor, we'd like to make use of any space that we could make on that corner. Uh, we have one of the most significant programs are children's programs. 85,000 people walk in the doors of the library per year. And we have a little laser counter that proves that for us. And of the 85,000, 50% fully are children. So when they come into the story time programs, they're listening and reading and, and doing this, they come in with their parents. So they have two parents and children. So 20 kids will easily fill a room of 60. We cram them in to the current children's center. So we're in desperate need of space for the children's programs, for the community itself, who's always asking us for extra space to spill into at other hours. But we'll use it completely for our programs. We need the space. And for health and safety and for the benefit of the community, we need an upgrade badly. So I'm thrilled to see that council has decided to place it on the budget. And I hope it is approved, because uh, nothing is better than the community service that uh, the library provides today. Now, with regards to um, the comment made earlier, Mr. Cunningham, first, thanks for the uh, compliment, and the, uh, but also the uh, point was made about Upper Providence. It is true that they did not approve in their budget uh, the allocation uh, that we had proposed and we had discussed with them with respect to uh, the library funding. It's not over. Uh, they did present some uh, opportunities and changes in the budget that has currently been approved to try to reallocate for uh, 13, 2013 and we'll continue to discuss that with them. But it is disappointing. Uh, myself, being an Upper Providence resident, and the residents of Upper Providence are not going to stand by that decision, I assure you. We're going to aggressively proceed with any and all measures to try to make sure they fund in Upper Providence. Because we all believe 
at both Upper Province and Media, which incidentally, the card holders of the library are 55% Upper Province and 45% Media. In terms of the walk-ins, it's a little different. It's 57% Media and 43% Upper Province. So it's about 50-50, and they should be stepping up for their library, for our library in the community. So uh, obviously I'm a, a big supporter of uh, the borough for everything it's done for the library. We're all very pleased at their attendance in all of our board meetings and all the great recommendations that you've all made. Uh, and we uh, continue to, to uh, would like you to continue to support uh, the capital plan. Now I'll ask, answer any questions as we proceed, uh, if there's any questions. So I any questions for Mr. Shields at this time. I do have a quick question for you, Mr. Shields. Um, it was mentioned made of the possibility of another building potentially housing the library. Has the library looked into that as a possibility? Yeah, actually, over the last more than two years, uh, my tenure has been five years on the board, president for the last three years. During that entire time, we've evaluated multiple areas and buildings, people coming at us and we approaching them. Uh, from Baltimore Pike, I won't name the exact locations, uh, to a Front Street location, uh, which is on the other side of town. Uh, through to, um, uh, just recently, a building that's nearby. Uh, all of these discussions uh, yielded the results of dollars and cents that would be greater than the program that we're currently proposing. However, uh, I'm still optimistic that there is still there is maybe an opportunity or two, uh, still today, but it would require a contribution by uh, the individual who's involved, the, the building or so forth. We couldn't fund it, uh, is the evaluation, although preliminary, back of the envelope, uh, there are some opportunities, and we're going to continue to aggressively pursue any alternatives. Uh, so, yes, we have, and we'll continue to look at different buildings around town. Uh, I should point out that the board has voted three times. It's very unusual for a board to vote three times on the same topic, but the board's changed over the last six years since this has been under evaluation. Each and every time, we unanimously voted to keep the site there, and the reasons are tenfold which I'd be happy to talk with others later, uh, but one of which is the convenience of that location for uh, handicapped, for disabled, the elderly, and the convenience of the parking lots that are adjacent to the area. So that's why that vote was there. If uh, Obviously, if there's a cost-effective solution that's nearby, we're, we're more than all yours. Thank you. Mr. Roth. And this is up here. Uh, I always had the understanding that part of the trust required that the library continue on that property. Is, is that a misunderstanding? There are uh, two things when I became president three years ago that I sought to find out about. That was one of them. The other one was why we didn't, couldn't find a deed to the building. And we did find a deed to the building and we actually, according to the records, owned the building next door, which is the firehouse. And the firehouse owned the library. I probably went over to the firehouse and said, move all your trucks out. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work though. It didn't work. Uh, the other question was to seek this trust issue. Uh, I had read it myself, the trust, and also had an attorney read it. Uh, there was no indication whatsoever that uh, trust indicated that the library building was to go to uh, the SPCA. The misreading was as follows. There's an, actually a cash trust that was set aside for the library that exists today. And it's approximately $400,000 that throws off interest that supports the revenue of the library. Uh, and it's that trust that if we were to cease operations, that cash would go to uh, the SBCA. That's it. But the building uh, was given uh, by will to the uh, to uh, the Media Women's Association, Library Association, that ran it back in 1902. Started in 1902, but it was given about 1948 was that trust. That's fascinating. You have the nutshell version, actually, of, uh, of all the ins and outs of this, as I understand it. Yeah, and that took us two years to figure out what I just threw out. <laughs> just to be honest, that's, your library could end up being right here. Because that was discussion back in 1991 <laughs> until it was made clear from the library that, no, we can't and leave We can't leave Front, and, 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 uh, Front Street due to the fact that then we lose our trust. Well, you know, there's uh, as, as early as last year, a year before, we talked about the library moving around this area and that, but we also have to consider archives, which is placed in the library. We're a custodian of archives. The historical archives is for media and upper province, goes back to the 1600s, and is in, the, in a, a small room upstairs, uh, but because of the dilapidated building, because of the HVAC system, we really need to move that. So we thought about how can we put that somewhere else or leave it in. Uh, right now, we're, we're hoping to keep it with the library because we think it's a huge asset for our, our communities. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shields. I, I did have one question. Did, 
did Madam Beaver speak to you about her uh, the conversation that I had that I had with her the other night? Yes, she did. Is that why you're here? No, no. <laughs> because uh, I, I told her I said what she needs to do. Robin Beaver is the she's the chair, I believe, of the capital project. Uh, she is the chair of the capital budget. Uh, we spoke the other night briefly, and I, I invited her to come and make a presentation to show everyone on campus, at a workshop, uh, preferably, to show exactly what the architectural plans are for the new building. So we get a better sense Absolutely. of how the space is going to be utilized. Because when I sat in on that meeting with you, um, I was a little unclear as to you know why is the upstairs really an empty space with just two conference rooms. She explained further and what they're actually going to be used for as, as well as uh, more community for that space. If any community member <coughs> wishes to come and use that space, it's going to be used 24-7, roughly. Absolutely. Uh, and that, I didn't understand that when we had our meeting in the archives room. So I invited her to make a presentation and, and maybe give us a better sense of, of everything that's going to be happening. And also, so that we can sit down and maybe discuss putting together something uh, language-wise about our um, our involvement in this project as a borough uh, with the funding, because they apparently you need to have something more concrete from us so that you can go out and solicit other people for funding. Once they know that we're on board with this project, whether we've handed you a check or not at the time, uh, it'll make it a little bit easier for you to go out and, and solicit funding. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree, and, and actually, my apologies, being immersed in this stuff for five years after working with three architects uh, on the details of this, I think everybody should know what's in my head, uh, but we'll be happy to do that, uh, and we should do that. Mm -hmm. In addition, uh, with regards to the funding, it is true that um, media and Upper Providence funding uh, will motivate uh, invest, uh, uh, donate donors. And, but to, uh, to report, uh, the uh, Media Rotary Council, which I'm also a member of, has just recently uh, donated $4,000 toward our library campaign. We have collected, uh, uh, as part of the capital campaign under Robin's leadership, uh, about $100,000 toward our $750,000 objective, and we have a line of sight on, on more. Um, and the Pennsylvania grant that you referenced briefly will hear next month, which is a half a million dollars, and I think that will also provide some momentum. There are a lot of positive things in our, I think the only uh, concern, fly in the ointment as it were, is Upper Providence and we're going to continue to work with them. Thank you, Mr. Shields. Uh, does anyone else wish to address council at this time? Ms. Miller. Thank you. a tax notice from Media Borough. We do not, but if you receive my email and my newest postal mail, I think I've made a list of how we support Media Borough for, in a tax way. Uh, Mr. Davidson, you admitted uh, in workshop that Upper Providence uh, and its cutout districts have um, the areas where um, maybe Middletown Library would be closer for them to go to, or even possibly Marple. Um, I appreciate the statistics that Mr. Shield gave. Um, I work in the high school library, so I need to say I'm a proponent of libraries. Um, that being said, um, I trust that between um, the working parties uh, there will be an agreement. Maybe not the dream library, but uh, something that will work for all the communities. Um, I was thinking in the back of my head until Mr. Shield spoke that maybe the library should be moved to Upper Providence. Uh, but then I heard about uh, we would lose, or we, the library would lose the grant money or their endowment or whatever it is, and the building needs to stay where it is, so that answered that question. Um, I'm assuming that if you did not read your emails, you did get my U.S. mail letter that I sent uh, with emails that I uh, created Saturday night late and then again early Sunday morning. Uh, I just want you also to know that I sent them to Delaware County Council. I sent them to Upper Providence Township, mm -hmm. and I also sent it to the Rose Tree Media School Board. Thank you. Thank you. All right, unless there's any further public call for public comment or uh, privilege to the floor, we'll move into the reports. Uh, actually, uh, before we move into the reports, I understand that uh, uh, we have a presentation, Vice President Simpson. Uh, 
think you will for the folks at home. I think we might be hearing about some race proceeds. Uh, yes, I'm here not as a council member, but as one of the co-directors of the Meeting Five Mile Race. Um, in 2006, we incorporated as a nonprofit and have been distributing proceeds from the race every year to local, other local nonprofits. And this evening, uh, I'd like to present a check to our treasurer uh, for the Capital Improvement Fund in the amount of $6,000. With thanks for the full community support of the, of the race. Thank you. Thanks to all who make that place the wonderful event that it is. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, let's move to uh, the engineer's report. Mr. Johnson. Uh, good evening. I'll try to make this very short and brief due to the time. Uh, we're cleaning up uh, for the, on behalf of the borough the new MS board department. Uh, we've been in contact with BADP with Brighton State to uh, ask and have them answer some of the questions we have before we officially send it in. Uh, before it gets said, and now come back to the bar to discuss with uh, uh, Mr. Smith and Mr. Jeffrey. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the roads are complete, late but complete. Um, we also met with uh, Higgins Electric and General Highway Products to review the battery backup for the three signals which are in place now and for signals that do not have battery backups to get an uh, estimate on uh, what it would cost to install battery backups. <coughs> Uh, miscellaneous um, did some assistance with the borough on uh, the CMAC contractors during uh, Hurricane Sandy with the signalization. Uh, I also had a meeting with borough staff and the professionals for the Media Elementary School on the roof replacement project having to do with some code issues, which uh, Mr. Jeffrey should have, uh, I believe, sent a letter out to the school uh, on that. Three, three uh, plan reviews. Uh, the Borough Council um, awarded to Wexcon the relining project for eight and all of those contracts have been sent to the contractor. Uh, I do expect them to come back shortly for execution. Uh, we did prepare bid documents for Philip Green Park, which will come up later uh, in the report. Under Mr. Mr. Simpson. Mr. Mr. Simpson's report. Mr. Simpson. Um, that's my report in a small amount of time. All right, uh, at 9.05 p.m., does anyone have any questions for, for, for the uh, engineer? Uh, Here, what's the current status of the paving action? Done. Done. Just want to get down the record. Excellent one word answer. <laughs> Beat me up more. <laughs> uh, anyone, uh, uh, does, anyone, does anyone else have any questions for uh, our engineer? Yeah. Hearing none, our solicitor. My report will be even quicker. I have no report. <laughs> Excellent. Happy holidays. Um, moving right along, we're, we're, we now have the mayor's report. Um, I do have a question for the mayor. I understand, uh, Mr. Mayor, that uh, you are a member of the mayor's of illegal guns. And uh, uh, I very much would like to hear your thoughts about this. You're a military man. Um, I used to be. used to be. Uh, that's one to wear the colors you know, uh, you always wear the colors. Um, but uh, I'd like your thoughts about that organization, especially in light of the events that have occurred in Newtown. Sure. Um, and again, this is my opinion based on, I guess, my experiences with assault weapons uh, a long time ago. But, uh, uh, and also, being mayor of the town in 1999, when four young children were killed by some senseless uh, gun violence. Um, so I have uh, joined, I guess, with several hundred other mayors throughout the country uh, on Mayors Against Illegal Guns with Michael Bloomberg and uh, Mayor Menino from Boston. And <clears throat> I guess one of the first acts is a letter that will go to the President of the United States uh, this week, um, or early next week, um, in which we, we state the reasons, the things that he could be involved in that actually require action by Congress uh, to pass. And we think, I mean, we think this is middle ground, basically, that can be approved, it's not pie in the sky. Uh, and I'll, I'll just let you know three of them. One is that we, we require every gun buyer to pass uh, a criminal background check. Right now, over 40% of the buyers of guns do not have a criminal background check. Uh, secondly, um, 
require making gun trafficking a federal crime. Prosecutors are not prosecuting 25% of the racketeering uh, uh, crime. So really to have some teeth, it needs to be a federal uh, issue. And the other is get the high capacity rifles and ammunition magazines off our streets. I mean, I've been involved with these weapons and, um, and, and you know, a mayor where we have a police department that are in danger every day. And police departments more or less throughout the country are in danger every day. And uh, I, for the life of me, after firing these things and Bob Diamond and I being shot at by these things, um, you know, I just don't get why, especially the high capacity rifles and ammunition are on the streets. So, um, I'm joining and signing the letter. Uh, see it in the papers, you may not. I, I don't know. I'm, but uh, practically every mayor I know has joined this effort. And there's over 100 of them in the media. Right? Over 100. I wish there were 100. <laughs> um, in Pennsylvania, they've joined in over 700 nationally, and the number is growing. I haven't heard any mayors against this, actually. Not one. So. <laughs> that, that As the president said, no applause. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that letter is available for those who wish to look for it on the uh, Mayors Against Illegal Guns website. So if you just Google that, uh, that term, mayors against illegal guns, you will see that button. I want to just commend Bob for taking the position. Thank you, Bob. All right, um, now to my report. Uh, let's see, the police department handled a total of uh, 612 incidents uh, uh, during the month of November. There were no reported burglaries, but I still want to address the bank robberies we had uh, a month or two ago. Um, the Media Borough Police Department are investigating two separate bank robberies, the first on October 20th at approximately 1045, um, the second on November 7th at approximately 1305. In each accident, the actor neither applied or displayed a weapon and verbally told tellers to empty their drawers. Anyone with information um, uh, or a similar job be requested uh, to let us know. We have pictures of them. We have pictures of them inside the bank. Uh, Paul Robinson, as far as... Uh, Public safety and myself are looking into yes, um, surveillance alternatives uh, <coughs> that we'll be presenting if we have all the facts uh, of, of what we think would be an improvement. And uh, my constant reminder is please call 911 if there are any emergencies that you may have. Do not hesitate to call. It's the only way that you can get action. So. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there any questions for the mayor? Hearing none, we'll move to the Council of Committee reports. Uh, Mr. Davidson, we'll lead off for the bank. Finance, personnel, and library, we have a budget to consider. Thank you, President Hall. Uh, I guess we'll start with the uh, easy stuff, payment bills. I will actually call on our treasurer to please list the bills for the prior month. As, uh, the usual, as per usual, there are uh, funds drawn on four accounts, $721,051.22 on the general fund, $6,034.50 on the recreation fund. Nothing from the liquid fuels fund, but that will change once the bills come due for the uh, paving. And the capital fund of $10,231.12. So I would recommend you make a motion to approve those bills as submitted. And so moved. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion for payment of our November bills? Yes, please, just to clarify the amount that was spent on attorney fees due to the Third Street project litigation. Well, there was some money spent on Third Street. I, I, I saw that it was both legal and, and, and engineering. I think Mr. Smith is prepared to tell you the exact figure now. $1,819.24 for engineering uh, with Third Street Bridge and $1,073 uh, with regard to legal on the Third Street project. For a total of $2,892.24. Right. Uh, any other questions concerning this motion? Carry on. All those in favor of payment of the federal bills for the month of November 2012 from the General, Recre the General uh, Recreation and Capital Funds, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Nay. The motion passes 6 to 1. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the millage rate. Those who are unaware, this is the tax rate per one one thousandth uh, of your property value that is taxed to you per year. Uh, I could read this. Unfortunately, I think it might lose sleep in most folks. The um, 
the, the summary, the executive summary is that the mills rate is staying unchanged this year at 3.0 mills for the 2013 tax year. So therefore, I move that Borough Council adopt a millage rate of 3.0 mills for 2013. All right. Um, it, the motion has been made and it has been seconded. To, uh, is there any discussion on the motion to approve order number 1100 concerning the 2013 millage rate? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of, of approving ordinance number 1100 uh, for the two, 2013 millage rate of 3.0, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Our millage rate remains the same. Well, the good news is no new taxes this year. That's um, good for the economy, I'm sure, and good for all the residents. Uh, next up on the uh, agenda is the budget. Uh, for those of you who were here beforehand, uh, Jeff Smith did an exceptional job presenting the budget and a summary of that. I will give the, again, executive summary of that. Our total fund revenues for this coming year of 2013 is $7.6 million, and expenditures are almost identical to that, $7.6 million. We do have a capital budget line item of $1.4 million, which includes a variety of projects, one of which is the Media <coughs> Province Library Refresh Project. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different because we have a um, an issue of uh, an ethical issue where one member of council has a member of their family who receives pecuniary, which means money essentially, uh, incentive from the library. So therefore, I'm going to split the approval of the budget into two separate motions. Uh, I will start with the, the entire fund. I'm going to exclude two line items. The first one, line item 456.50 the amount of $110,000, which is the operating fund for the library. And the second line item is line item 409.71, which is the $200,000 capital refresh funding. Uh, so i uh, discuss pretty much at this point ad nauseum during the last meeting and this one. Uh, and so therefore, I will move that council adopt all line items, excluding, again, 456.50 and 409.71 as a motion. Second that motion. All right, there is a motion that's been seconded uh, with regard to adopting the final 2013 general fund, capital fund, liquid fuels fund, and recreation fund budgets, with the exception of two line items concerning the library. Is there any discussion on the motion? We will call for discussion. I'll call the question. All those in favor of adopting the final 2013 budget as, uh, 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 as uh, outlined by uh, Councilman Davidson, um, with the exception of the two library items, please say aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. That motion passes. Thank you. So uh, before we do the next vote, again, this will include the two items I just excluded. I believe it is uh, President Hall who uh, is unable to vote on this one, so therefore he will be abstaining. Is that correct? My daughter is a part-time page. Media for Providence Free Library. And she therefore, receives money for her efforts, therefore I cannot vote. Uh, but I'd just like to say, as a, just a general principle, uh, the library I think is one of the landmarks in town. I have uh, three children, I'm an avid reader. Uh, I spend a lot of time going to the library. Every time I go to the library, my children come out with stacks of books and they are ecstatic. It, the programs they run are exceptionally well done. Um, and so I, I personally am donating uh, a, a check to the library. In fact, I wrote it today. Uh, I would encourage any resident who appreciates what the library brings to the town to dig as deep as possible, given the economy, to help support the library. And I will continue to support the library. I believe it's one of the values that we support in our community is, is a, a secondary, essentially educational resource, and a resource for people to help get jobs, go you know, work on resumes, to do research, and I, I've gotten books out of the library constantly, and I, they've never not got a book that I've asked for. So I'm just going to continue to reiterate, I heavily support the library. I do appreciate, Fran, all the work you've done, and um, I know as a council, and I've, President Hall and I have talked, we were going to work as best we can to reach out to Upper Providence and see if we can get them to get on board and, and figure out a way to make it work. So I, I'm hoping that the rest of the council is also supportive of that. Uh, therefore, I will make a motion. My second motion is that Media Borough Council adopt two individual line items in the 2013 budget. 
Again, I'll reiterate, 456.50, the amount of $110,000 for the operating budget of the fund. And the second line item, 409.71, and the amount of $200,000 for the library project, refresh project. Therefore, moved. So, motion. There's been a motion that's been seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, just for clarity's sake, this is literally just moving the two hundred thousand from a non-committed capital reserve fund to a line item referencing the library refresh. It's not a commitment. It's not writing a check. That's all it is. I think that's what needs to be clarified. Yes, yeah, there's to a lot of confusion with people that think that there's a commitment of that money. I think it's important that those funds be there. So that Mr. Shields and other representatives of the library have the ability to show that there is someone who is committed. Uh, and I think, so I just wanted to make sure that that's very clear to the public. To be honest, I would defer to either the solicitor or, or Jeff Smith in terms of, uh, let's just be clear, a budget is essentially a planning tool. Correct. We are approving this budget right now, essentially saying it is okay for all of these hundreds of, or thousands of line items are approved for to basically spend that money next year. For and they all get moved around at different times. We, like, as a council, have the authority to modify the budget by resolution at any time. Yeah, and if I could just kind of add it to Mr. Robinson's point, to spend this money will require an additional vote of council. This, right. this, this, this vote tonight to budget it does not spend it. To write the check will require an additional vote of council, whether it's on a bills list or a separate motion it will require some separate action of council. Right, and just to sort of close that conversation, there was a discussion at the working workshop meeting earlier this month where folks were saying, like, well, maybe we should put some conditions on this money or have a contract. And it is my belief that we, if that is the desire of council to, and I, I think it's a prudent idea to have some sort of agreement between the library and the borough in terms of this money, uh, that we should put something in place in writing so that we are all on the same page with how it will be spent. I'm fully in favor of that, and I think we have the, the, the ability to do that next year. So, any other hopefully that answers your question. Any other questions or uh, comments that wish to be made by council before I call the question? Um, I will, although I cannot vote, I, I can't comment. Um, Actually, this, you should. I should not? No, no, just you should oh, participate I, in the discussion. Okay. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will call the vote then. Yeah. Um, all right then. Uh, I will call the question. All those in favor of approving uh, the two line items from the budget, the 2013 final budget concerning the library, uh, to with $110,000 contribution to operating costs and $200,000 towards the capital project, please say aye. Yes. Aye. aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously with one abstention. Uh, the only other item I'm going to bring up. I believe that's the end of my no items for personnel library. We've certainly talked about um, the tonight. I believe is winter solstice. It is the shortest night of the year. Yeah, the end of the world. And uh, no, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow,
for the Recreation Committee, I would suggest that after the holiday rush is over, if you'd like to start planning some winter activities or dare even think about spring activities, that you use the resources and the wonderful programs that are provided by the Recreation Committee. They do a wonderful job, and I'd highly recommend um, any of those activities to you and your family. Um, that's basically my agenda report. I did want to acknowledge and thank um, one comment earlier regarding the, the Wawa. I, I agree, and I pers this is only personally, I, I do agree that that was a missed opportunity, but um, my, my point, and, and actually a point of conscience after having sat in a workshop meeting and the planning commission meeting regarding those, those applications, was that I personally was disappointed with the way that uh, Wawa, their representatives were treated, Mr. Lynn, Mr. Sullivan, uh, people from Media Real Estate, and the people from Wawa themselves, and some of the professionals that they brought in. I, I didn't think that um, I, I didn't think that they were treated respectfully. I didn't think that they were treated properly. This I know I will be contradicted by many, but I sat there. I felt embarrassed to, to be at those meetings in the way that people were behaving towards them, and I just wanted to publicly say that I, I think it would be uh, foolish of us to feign surprise at the fact that they pulled their application, given the way that they and their representatives were treated. Again, just my opinion, but I felt compelled to share that. Development, fair trade, and farmers market. Susan. Thank you very much. Um, regarding property uh, legislative action, the first one is the execution of the landscape architect agreement. Uh, this was discussed in planning uh, to be landscape ar architects for the Hoopman Park in his, uh, in his uh, presentation. I'd like to make that in the form of a motion to ratify the execution of the argument. Second. There are two seconds. Um, well, is there any uh, any discussion or comment? Is there any motion? All in favor of executing the landscape architect agreement with the Palo Design and Planning. This is with regard to Hootman Park project. Park, which is the small park across from Hootman. Uh, there was damage during a, a sandy storm and uh, through feverize advertisement for bids of work to, to do that the remediation. So I make that in the form of a motion. Is there a second on motion? Second. Comment, discussion on motion. Hearing none, all those in favor of authorizing advertising of bids for work at Philip Green Park as outlined, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Um, I'm going to skip the fair trade, and in lieu of the Mayan calendar and not needing another one, I would urge people to go to the local stores and pick up the beautiful fair trade calendar that we can continue to use for the rest of this year. Uh, Does it end on Sunday? <laughs> They're being uh, sold throughout the media and some of the different stores, um, educational component. It's not really a fundraiser. The, the committee's not making money, but the merchants who are selling them can uh, make some revenue from that. Uh, so I would urge you to do that. I have no farmers, markets informa farmers market information this evening and nothing to report on economic development. So that would conclude my report. Just wishes for a great holiday. Any questions for? Vice President Simpson. Uh, hearing none, we then turn to Community Development and Media Arts Council. That is uh, my agenda. Um, okay, I've got the four agenda items. The first is with regard to the okay, comprehensive plan. Uh, this is a project that excites me. It gives us the opportunity as a borough to plan for the future. And uh, we have received a grant that will pay for consultants who will guide us through that process. Uh, the process will involve interviewing stakeholders, uh, you know, public outreach in order to gain uh, information about where folks believe that media ought to be headed over the next five to ten years. Um, the Community Design Committee uh, interviewed five well, well qualified uh, potential applicants and based upon that interview process um, and based upon the bids that were made, uh, they recommended that uh, the firm of Simone Collins, which is out of Norristown, Pennsylvania, uh, be engaged for purposes of working on the comprehensive plan along with Delaware County Planning Commission. Um, so uh, I am going to make a motion tonight that we enter into an agreement with Simone Collins for the amount of $46,724 uh, to provide comprehensive plan services as a comprehensive plan consultant. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded uh, to award of the uh, contract for the comprehensive plan consultant to Simone Collins in the amount of $46,740. There are any questions or comments? 
I just want to say this, this is an extraordinary, um, you know, it sounds kind of mundane, comprehensive plan, what is that? Um, it really provides future for direction for this council and, and future councils on, you know, how to best develop this, this area uh, from business development. It, it provides guidance to, to realtors on uh, what types of businesses to attract, guidance to the business community on what types of uh, businesses to bring into town. Um, guidance, is, uh, guidance and feedback from the community on, um, on everything from environmental issues to trash issues to and recycling. It brings in all aspects of what makes for, for high quality of life. So this is a non-trivial item. It's a very important item. And, it's, and, and part of that process involves all the stakeholders, that, and, and that's all of us, all the citizens, all, all of those who live and, and breathe here in, in media. Um, uh, you know, um, where we want to be in the next five to ten years. So it's very, very important. It's a massive effort, um, and I think we've, you know, chosen um, an excellent um, consultant for this process. So uh, I just wanted to reiterate that. It's very important. All right, I'll call the question. All those in favor, please say aye. Yes. Aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. And uh, Mr. Smith, uh, can we send a... Um, a properly led, awarded letter to the other applicants and thanking them for their fine presentations and uh, their qualifications. Sure. Thank you. Um, just for, the, for public's information, uh, we anticipate, I anticipate, that come January, the next Community Design Committee meeting, which is held on the first Tuesday. Uh, actually, it's not going to be held the first Tuesday of, uh, of this coming January. I think it's going to be held the second Tuesday of this coming January. Do I have that right, Mr. Smith? Uh, yes, the December meeting will be uh, January the 8th, and then the regular Community Development Committee meeting is the fourth Tuesday at 4 o'clock. Okay. Um, and uh, it is a public meeting. Anybody who wishes to come and learn about the project, please do. Uh, I anticipate that at that meeting we will have discussions with county representatives as well as Representative Simone Collins to discuss uh, a chronology of events um, of when things will happen, uh, when meetings will occur. Um, all right, so the second motion is with regard to community development block grants. This is resolution 2012-17. Uh, every year we make application for money that is available through block grants, community development block grants, and we pick a couple of projects after we have had a public hearing. We had a public hearing uh, this, oh goodness, I'm, not, I'm blanking. Was it early this week, Jeff? I was at their workshop meeting, so two, yeah. two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I apologize. Um, time seems to fly. Um, and uh, we decided upon two projects. Uh, one is for sidewalk installation throughout the borough, si sidewalks in um, uh, properties that currently do not have sidewalks. This is an effort to kind of knit together our sidewalk network throughout the town. Uh, there are, um, we do have a very good network, but there are some gaps. And uh, unfortunately, where there are gaps, sometimes people take in the streets, which is unsafe. We'd like to see whether or not we can fill in those gaps. So that was uh, that was one of the projects which we, for which we are, would like to apply for community development block grants. The other was for ADA uh, compliant curb cuts and ramps uh, in and around the courthouse area and in and around the borough hall complex. So I'll make that in the form of a motion uh, motion that we adopt resolution 2012-17, uh, which in essence is applying for block grants for sidewalk installations and PPA curb cuts and ramps. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution uh, number 2012-17 to apply for the community development block grant for the two projects that uh, President Hall uh, announced. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Passes. Item number three is a letter for the Our Town grant application. This is something I've mentioned a couple of times. The Our Town grant is a grant that's made available for the National Endowment for the Arts. It's a matching grant. It permits, uh, if, if we are successful in our application, we will have this money available for planning of a project. And uh, through a series of stakeholder meetings and meetings with, uh, with, meetings with public, um, the uh, project that uh, has been chosen is to equivalent valve Plum Street and Plum Street Mall from Front Street down to Baker Street. There are no plans for this yet. This is, uh, this is a grant money that will help us pay for uh, designer services, architect services to help 
plan a project on the Plum Street Mall. Um, in order for the grant application to proceed, a letter is required from uh, President of Council to, to indicate our municipal, municipal support for that grant application. This does not commit ourselves to anything um, other than uh, that we are signaling our support for the grant application. So I make it in the form of the motion that uh, I be authorized to sign such a letter in support of the Our Town grant application. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to authorize President Hall uh, to uh, write a letter in uh, support of our town grant application through the National Endowment of the Arts. Any questions or, or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> Does this mean I've got to write that letter? It's going to rely upon Mr. Smith to write that letter. Um, I'll be happy to write the letter. And he'll be happy to edit it. Edit it. Uh, last item here is for Landscape Architect Services concerning the 3rd Street Dam project. Um, as we have discussed uh, several times before, part of what we, what, part of, uh, what we want is to engage a landscape architect uh, with regard to the 3rd Street Dam project. This is something that we approved by our vote back in September. Um, and we would uh, like... I'm moving that uh, we engage uh, LGD, which is Larson, LDG, I apologize, Larson Design Group, to act as the architect, the landscape architect on the dam project. Is that in the form of a motion? It is in the form of a motion. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to engage Larson, LDG, LDG Larson. Design group. Thank you, design group. Sorry, it's been a long day. Uh, as uh, for their architect services regarding the Third Street project. Any questions? Comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And the motion carries. Just for clarification's sake, this we're not. Uh, all we are doing is uh, is engaging LVG to provide uh, these services. They are not going to go out and start drawing pictures tomorrow. Um, the, the, the purpose of this is to permit a revised design uh, proposal to be drafted that we then will review for potentially in January if it's available by then. Um, so this, we're, we're not approving any plan. Uh, we're just approving uh, that LDG will be engaged. And at some point, uh, they will presumably begin to work on the project. Um, all right, those are my action items. Um, I will, I do have one uh, one comment, and this, it, it is with regard to the Wawa project. And in this case, but you came in and you had some words to say. Um, I would, for those who are not, who are not aware, uh, there was an application made uh, with regard to a property that is situated behind the Starbucks at uh, the intersection of Providence Road and Baltimore Avenue uh, to uh, develop actually two properties as a Starbucks. Um, and as a, as a while, I apologize. Uh, and uh, what there are a number of complications to the project, one of which is that uh, there is a borough owned street that bisects that property. And there are a number of zoning issues. Um, and uh, it, I think it's important to clarify that the borough never took a vote on this project. We never denied them anything. Uh, the, the applicant decided to withdraw their, to withdraw their application uh, after a vote was taken by the Planning Commission on something that was uh, presented to them as being completely unrelated to the Wawa project. So uh, there never was anything before this council to vote on. Um, and, and I hope that, that that helps clarify things in, in folks' minds. We were approached as a borough uh, to discuss whether or not we had a willingness to abandon Baker Street. And uh, we did respond to that request. But at no time did we ever take a vote that told Wawa that, uh, told Wawa that their application was denied. And I agree with you that Wawa is a wonderful company. Uh, I think that uh, it could be a wonderful, um, it, is a, it is a wonderful corporate citizen of this town. We do, as a council member, have some significant concerns about whether or not the, the project fit into the uh, fit, fit at that location. And it was not just us, but it was members of the public who came forward and expressed uh, 
by a two to one margin by my count, those persons who came before us to speak to us, uh, they expressed their uh, disapproval of that project. Um, so what that project would have looked like by the time it got before council, I don't know. It never got before council for us to vote. Um, all right. And, and, and I understand that reasonable minds can differ on many things. But I will say that during the course of, uh, during the course of our discussions with Obama and Media Real Estate, which owns the land about this project, I did not get the sense that anyone was being treated poorly. I thought that at all times we tried to behave in a professional manner. There were times when there were, there were hard questions that were asked, but that's something that I think that the public would expect us to do in order to understand what this project is and what the project could mean to the borough and its residents. Um, but uh, as I said before, uh, reasonable minds can differ about uh, their impressions of what has happened. There are movies and books written to that effect. Um, all right, so uh, I think that concludes my report. No questions? Actually, I do have a question. Yeah. Um, I, I went back through my e emails from the summer, from when Wawa first came into the picture, and just, just for, you know, I had a moment, and went back in and counted how many emails that we received at the borough level um, in regards to the Wawa project. And it was interesting to see that there were, if I remember correctly, this is, I did this a while ago, approximately 43 emails that came in that were pro-Wawa. And only about four or five that were negative and two undecided. I don't think that those are the numbers. I think that there were there were quite a bit more uh, emails that were not in support of the Wawa project. But and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think that the majority of the emails that we received were not from our residents. And uh, I, I would I would say this: it is a lot easier to write an email than it is to appear in public. Uh, and, and I, as a council person. Um, understanding that some people cannot make it to these meetings for a number of different reasons. But uh, as a council person, I tend to wait more for those folks who come before us because I think that uh, they have, they consider themselves, they have a greater stake in the game. Um, and by my count, there was double the number of persons who were opposed to the project as were in favor of the project that came before us as a council. And some of them were not meeting residents as well. That's how I remember correctly, there were a lot from another Providence, another Providence that came in. Uh, from Rice Street Road to Bowling Green. So if you're if you're trying to weigh them in equally as media residents and not weigh in equally to the people that emailed us who may not have been our residents but are taxpayers and business people who probably live more of their, their daily lives in this town than their own personal homes, I think we should weigh in all these factors of all the all the people that write into us. We should never just dismiss them just because they don't pay um, taxes as being a resident. Um, if you have a law firm in this town and you were and you're doing work from seven o'clock in the morning until eleven o'clock at night, um, and you're paying taxes on a building and business tax, mercantile tax, uh, whatever other tax that they pay then I, I think that they have a right to weigh in on these larger projects that we have. They're, they're people that are part of our community, just as well as the people that have roots in the ground. And I, I just find it interesting that we never really discuss that. And when, when I hear people say that you're only going to take into consideration the people that show up at your meetings, um, I think that's wrong. I don't think anyone said that. that. I think that it would, it would be, the point was that um, that uh, we look more towards media residents uh, than persons who are not media residents when, when they come to comment because we represent media residents. Uh, we do represent business owners as well. Um, but we do look to people who have those ties with the community because presumably they know best. And also they're the ones who elected us. I'm just looking at Monica because I, I took notes at the time of the meeting and I'd say that of the, the eight persons who voice uh, concerns about this project at the one public meeting before the Planning Commission, uh, it looks like six or seven of them were for media residents. Uh, and uh, it looks like those who were against the majority of those were not media residents. But mm -hmm. we, can, we can argue that. I'm, I'm not saying that we, that we dismiss what, the, what folks have to say because they are not for media. But Lord knows we listen to many, many people in the course of the, uh, the, our, our discussions about the dam. We're not from media, 
and we listened to them, and I think that we listened to them respectfully, and we did take what they had to say into consideration when we made our decision. With that. I think that we do that with the, we do that with the Wawa project as well. But my point is, we never had a vote. It never came before. It came to a vote before this body. Uh, what that vote would have been at the time that that project came before us, I don't know. Well, I understand that. I was just. Uh, it was just something that I had sat down and looked through my emails because they come in every day. And I just found it interesting that we did get quite a number of emails that were pro for this project. And I think that we do need to take that those emails into consideration whether they are residents or business owners. Um, people not just do business in this town. Just like the people that come for Third Street Bridge Project. Um, whether they're residents or business people that, that Cross that border. As I'm sure we would have if, 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 we, uh, if it ever came to a vote before this council, mm -hmm. the point is it never came to a vote before this council. Right, I just wanted to add that Media Real Estate willfully yeah. pulled their, their application and it was based on the decisions, I believe, and I, I don't know their actual reasons, of the planning commission which, of which we appoint. So, as far as I know, this entire year we have had no official vote or expression of any sort of opinion whatsoever. Oh, but we did. On the we did because when Walmart first came before us, we we all sat there down was a, and we a straw said, vote taken a working meeting, which is not a legally binding vote. It still is going to instill something into a, another advisory body as to what. Well, and based on how that, we feel about the project, say, if we well, say I, I think if that we, we say forward, unanimously that we are I, against I, the project, of course they're going to use I that. I think we've all had our opportunity yeah. to say what we need. What we need to say. I'm not aware that the Planning Commission was aware of any uh, straw vote that we took as council with regard to the Wawa project. So far as I know, they were unaware of that completely. Um, and just for the, just to set the record straight, because I know that this is a point of some sensitiveness with the Planning Commission, uh, the Planning Commission was not asked to weigh in on the Wawa project. They were asked to, put, to make a recommendation with regard to a request to rezone part of the land that would be involved in the Wawa project. And they were specifically told that it was not part of the Wawa project, that they were not being asked to vote on the Wawa project. So um, that is, a, I think, a point of uh, some contention, uh, some concern with uh, the Planning Commission. Uh, they feel as if uh, they somehow have been uh, tagged as having been folks who voted against this project. Um, anyways, so... Uh, well, I, I do right? think that it is a point of concern um, when you look at it from both angles because whether it was specifically referred as a Wawa or non-Wawa question on the evening that you're discussing, everyone in the room knew that it absolutely had to do with Wawa and that that particular zoning question was necessary for the Wawa to move forward or not to move forward. So you have you can't, you know, you have to look at it from both sides. So, you know... If the planning commission is saying, "Oh, we didn't know it was Wawa," that's that's kind of a stretch. No, I, I was the only member of council there that night, and it was said not once, but at least twice, in response to the question that that, that uh, the request to amend uh, the zoning map had nothing to do with the Wawa project. That was specifically stated from the applicant. Several, from the applicant. From the applicant. Yeah, but you knew perfectly well that that had to happen but, in order for them but to But, Donna, if that's the case, with all due respect, then, then the applicant should have I understand said. what you're saying, but we can't pretend that we didn't know, nor can the Planning Commission pretend that they didn't know what it that's, was. That's where I disagree. I mean, they're, they're, they're a body that, that if someone comes before them and says, I'm, I'm coming before you to ask for a zoning change, then they have to look at it. I mean, that would be kind of like saying to the judge going, well, you know, I know you didn't shoot the person, but I, I, you know, I, get the I know logistics. you did. I do. I get the logistics. Okay. I'm just saying that But that's where the broader, board, as both the broader, elected officials, as both elected officials and appointed officials, sense, we have a responsibility. But that's where sometimes we have responsibility I to have to take a look at the law has to take All right, I'll tell you, if the zoning had changed, they could have come back in two weeks from now and said, we want to put a dollar store on the other side of Baker Street. So. The zoning application had, I think you are, the grain of truth in what you're saying is that yes, it potentially was related to the wall, but for example, if they did pull the wall application and that zoning change was approved, then they could put something there that, that would impact the neighborhood residents right next to it. I think so, we've, all, we've all had the opportunity to speak to so this. It is both sides are correct, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, all right. Uh, let's move along. I think that we are now at uh, 
at Dr. Stein Technology, Media Business Authority, and Environmental Advisory Council. Great, thank you. Um, I will keep this short. Um, quick on the uh, in environmental issues. Uh, just one announcement. I've said this actually a couple of times. I'm starting to sound like a broken record. We we got our Energy Star rating. Um, it takes four. To, it takes six to eight weeks to actually get the official letter back from the EPA um, and our decals and so on. We will put out a press release outlining all the um, uh, the benefits and uh, uh, and and the you know the process and so on. But just uh, we did actually get official approval from the EPA just this um, past week or so. So again, kudos to the borough and uh, to our efforts in that area and energy efficiency. Our rating is, is 91. Uh, just some notes from the MBA. The Media Business Authority would like to thank our merchants, borough council, borough staff, and the departments. I'm reading from their notes to me. Media's nonprofit organizations and media's residents and visitors for a great 2012. Uh, to, in terms of uh, works in progress, Santa's Village runs daily through December 23rd. Our thanks to the Franklin, again, I'm reading uh, from their note to me. Our thanks to the Franklin Mint. Federal Credit Union and Turning Point, the MBA is putting the final touches on planning for the annual New Year's Eve ball drop. Many thanks to our sponsors, Spazo, Riddle Hospital, and Keys Towing. 2013 will kick off with our annual Chinese New Year celebration on Saturday, February 9th. Uh, in terms of completed projects, the MBA held its 10th annual Jazz by Night Festival on November 17th. Um, the event was well attended and profitable. Uh, the NBA also held Santa's arrival on November 23rd in front of the courthouse. We discussed that, um, and again, I, I, I'm, I'm encouraged that you know we'll look into uh, some uh, future plans on that, which is a joint project between the borough and public safety and uh, the NBA. Projects span. Uh, let's see here, going on the. Media coverage included ABC, CBS, and Fox, and was filmed by an NBA videographer as well. Uh, special thanks for the, to the media police and fire company and Lynn Villa Orchards for their support of this event and donation of trees for the holiday season. Carriage rides have been held each Wednesday from December 15th, and I guess it's just finishing up, uh, just finished up this week, uh, the 19th. Um, and they were, those were all sold out. Um, and I believe that is my report. I'm just going to say one other item. Um, I was elected by the residents of this borough. Um, this is representative government. This is the, the country we live in. We, rep we elect people to represent us. People vote for us um, are the ones who I have my first allegiance to because they voted for us. We are elected to represent their interest. Um, that is not to say I don't take into account other people's interests. Certainly the business owners who pay tax. Um, um, but many of us pay taxes to other municipalities. And then thirdly, the people who shop here and, and use our, our services, it's terrific. I also um, play into, uh, have them play into my thinking on any and all these important decisions. But how many of you uh, shop at King of Prussia? Does that mean you have, should have a stay in the, um, in the way King of Prussia is run and, on a municipal level? So it's, it's really about balancing on that. But first and foremost, we are elected by the residents of this borough. And then secondarily, we, we try to represent those interests the, the uh, in interests of the business community, those who pay taxes, whether they live here or not. And then third, of course, our adjacent, adjacent communities, because we're, we try to be good neighbors. But it's a balancing act, and, and we can't just say simplistically, this is, this is you know, better than that, except you know, the bottom line is we are rec representing the interests of the residents first, and that's what we were duly elected to do in consideration of all those other parties. All right, does anyone have any questions for me? Dr. Stein. Well right. stated, Dr. Stein. Actually, um, I'd like to see how much the business taxes um, help out the residential, they keep the residential tax as well. Is there any way, um, Jeff, can, can you uh, sit down in the new year and kind of show us what the business taxes bring in, yeah, all the businesses means. and and the non-residential taxes, let's say, and sure. how they weigh in for the residential taxes and help keep them low? Sure, yeah, the mercantile, the business privilege, and then we would be happy to provide the uh, earned income taxes can be broken down uh, resident versus non-resident, so we could probably get something together for you. Glad to see that. Thank you. But then on the other hand, 
we would have to sit there if we're going to attempt to do this to take a look at expenses. Because for every, you know, for, for every business, then there's police protection, there's fire protection. But that would be there. But, but that's that. Yeah. But we pay extra for that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 don't, I, don't pay, I don't pay the fire department. It sounds like we have uh, a, a juicy topic for future, for for future, future discussions. 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 Right. There we future go. Discussions. Um, I'm looking towards the future. I see we're eating more and more of it as we sit here tonight. Uh, let's move on to health in the store. Well, I have uh, nothing under health other than I cannot get rid of this cough that I've had for weeks because of the crazy weather we've had. Um, under historic, I understand that the house tour was a great success. I will have better numbers and figures and information for you in January uh, because the president of the Historic Society has pneumonia and is very ill. So I haven't been so able to full. talk to her. Yeah, I guess I said kid or something. Um, which is Kathy LaRusso, and they did they did a good job. They, they worked really well together, worked very hard together, and from my understanding, um, I did read an article that the servant had written, that she had gone on the tour, and that it was a, a, uh, a very nice success for them. Um, and that's all. The only other thing would be working with the archives. I think we need to sit down with um, with Ken Davidson and again with Mr. Shields from the library and put together and or go over some paperwork that we have found in regards to keeping the archives in place at the library and and move forward on that next year. All right, we are making New Year's plans. Uh, any questions for Mrs. Rourke? We'll then turn to Mr. Robinson. Okay, um, legislative requirements, uh, number one, is the ex or I'd like to ratify the agreement that we have finally uh, come together with, with the Fraternal Order of Police and the Media Police Department. Uh, very nice to say that we did not, or were not required to go to arbitration. Sat down with a great group of police officers uh, uh, after some healthy debates, good there discussions. We were able to come together with a, a very good proposal or agreement that will be for the next five years. Uh, we had some modifications with regards to medical expenses, disability, as well as retirement. Uh, and I will be the first one to say that serving or working with our police department is always a privilege and an honor. So I make a motion that we uh, ratify the uh, memorandum of agreement with the Fraternal Order of Police and the Media Police Department. Is there a second on the motion? Second. second. A discussion on the motion. I will call the question. All those in favor of executing the memorandum of agreement with the Fraternal Order of Police, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Second on the motion. This passes. I'm sorry. Too quick, Mr. President. Too slow. Uh, I'm trying to be good for you. <laughs> Get it through. Great scene is going to come. Uh, second is the stop sign at 2nd and Monroe Streets. So this is something that has been batted around for, I believe, five, six, seven years. Uh, at one point, there was discussion about taking off and not having a stop sign, but after further discussion with the Republic Safety Committee, uh, I uh, uh, agreed to and, and all of the public safety agreed that we will install a stop sign at 2nd Monroe Streets. Uh, this will be part of a later motion that I'll make with regarding to advertising <coughs> traffic ordinance. But for right now, under the power, and this is very difficult for me to say, but under the power of the mayor, I would ask that he please indicate and advise our police department to install uh, the stop sign at their earliest convenience, with meaning really the highway department. Mr. Scott, Mr. Scott is that, does that need to be made in the form of a motion? I'm sorry, I was checking. <laughs> we, we were, we were, asking, we were talking on this topic. topic. Asking the mayor, under his, under the mayor power act, to install the stop signs that need to be done by motion. I think he just has the power. Yeah, I think he just has it's the not power. personal. But that's yeah. what that's what the custom does. All right. I'd rather see him do it personal. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think so on that too. That's, and that's and 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 procedurally what will happen after that. Right. After that's that's that determination is that that item will get added to the item number four. Item number four. So if I'm not mistaken, that's the only the only cross street that does not have a stop sign off Monroe. Is that correct? Yes. All the rest have have stop signs. 
and, and, and so I'll let me get through the, I mean, that, that doesn't need to be in a formal report. We'll call it. Okay, this is simply a request from public safety on asking the mayor to use his power. Is there a requirement there to put those stripes back? That there's they can do that. Well, they're kind of there anyway. Yeah, yeah. sort of kind of there, yeah, yes. Tell me to be paid. So the, be, stripes. the stripes the stripes so, will be put back. Kind of it's kind of like this, but getting a little bit gray, but not too much. Yeah. Is there a motion or no? There's no motion no needed, so that, that, that's taken. And to add on to that, part of that is the Public Safety Committee, uh, with adding the stop sign, has made that, that we are going to look into doing basically a comprehensive review of all our stop signs, taking a look at you know some stop signs that might have been needed five, six, seven, eight, ten years ago that may not be needed now, uh, as well as stop signs that aren't there that may be there. One of the biggest things is trying to look at a few different areas of the borough that we could really emphasize as our strong pedestrian walkways and really uh, emphasize those. I was in the community today that uh, at these intersections they had, and I instantly thought of you, doctor, solar signs that were LED powered were LED lights, and when someone wanted to cross the street, they would push the button and had a triangular sign that said pedestrian walkway. It would light up, no electricity, little solar panel. I was like, this is great for me, and you're going to love it. So these are the things we need to take a look into. So that maybe we can eliminate some stop signs, but also make pedestrian walkways safer in, in, in the borough. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if there's anything. We, you know, one of the issues is enforcement. Um, I nearly got. Uh, Green in, in the middle of uh, State Street. Um, I mean, I was clearly in the middle of the walk. There was no car, and this car just comes out of nowhere, and it was just like, hello. I'm in the middle of this thing. What I found, it's clearly marked. It's just there's an education component here yeah. that's that's really difficult. Um, Some areas of the state, pedestrian walkways don't don't beat anything. Yeah, and you know, luckily, we in media are finally starting to recognize that pedestrian walkways do mean something now. Uh, but more times than not, we, know, we put our life on the line. Exactly. Next on the list is uh, a handicap parking request for 426 East, East Jefferson Street. I make a motion to approve the request for adding a handicap parking spot on 426 East Jefferson Street. Is there a second? There is a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adding a handicap, of approving the handicap parking request at 426 East Jefferson Street, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say aye. Motion passage hands. Next on the left list is actually just uh, maintenance, shall I say, but um, this is requesting our solicitor to draft and advertise a traffic ordinance. Basically, the stop signs and different things that we've added through the course of the year, uh, we will now add on to uh, or do it officially and add it on to our, our ordinance. So with that, I would like to make a motion that we authorize our solicitor to draft and our borough manager to advertise a traffic ordinance amendments. Second. Second. There's a motion that's been seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of authorizing our solicitor to draft and to have advertised the amendments to the traffic ordinance, uh, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. <coughs> the motion passes unanimously. Last on the list is a mass gathering permit application by the Media Business Authority for New Year's Eve community ball drop for Monday, December 31st. Uh, that's in the form of a motion. Second. Second. There is a motion that's been seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Media ball drop. With regard to the discussion, I would strongly encourage our business authority to bring these applications in sooner than five days before the end of the year uh, because there are some here. This is an application I wish we had an opportunity to have greater discussion on. However, due to the time frame, uh, I'm not going to be the Grinch that stole Christmas, so I will be the first one to say this passive. <clears throat> I'm sure that Dr. Scott will take it to the NBA for discussion. Um, all right. Uh, is there any discussion on this? I just want to inform residents. I believe that the ball drop will be an, at sponsors. So it's not moving to the courthouse. Mm -hmm. it, 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 well, well, let me normally is. Not that we know of. Okay. Um, there's been a motion. I believe it's been second. So, yeah. Okay. Good. Um, uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Actually, yes. It, if in the next year we can maybe sit down and look at some of these applications that come before us, whether they're coming months in advance or five days in advance, and just kind of go through them, each one of them, and see where it can be brought to us sooner, or just have some discussions earlier on before they come before us. 
Um, I know that we have a few years ago even thought about just having our manager take care of these applications that have been happening for the last 35 years. Um, and just, I, I don't know how we can work this out, but. Well, I, I remember correctly, last council, uh, it was recommended to cut down on a re constant review of repetitive annual mm -hmm. events mm -hmm. unless there was something that occurred at an annual event exactly. that required us to. So now you're asking us to go back. We did that thought. Well, I think we can discuss that at a workshop. I think, oh, that, well, I think that that is a perfect workshop topic. One of those things will be tearing your hair out over at 11.45 p.m. Um, <laughs> or if the mayor's dead body. Okay, any other uh, discussion on the mass gathering permit application with regard to the New Year's ball drop? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the mass gathering permit application for the Media Business Authority's New Year's EU Community Ball Drop, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. And last two quick things, uh, fire company every month, I promise I'm going to make sure that I don't break my promise. Anybody who is interested in serving the media fire company, please do contact the fire company. It does not, that, does not need to be a firefighter. You can volunteer to do uh, administrative services. And last but not least, yes, I do want to apologize, not just to the business district, but to all our residents with regards to the paving. Uh, I don't want to say that we were held hostage, but uh, that, you know, in order to get these some of these things done, we had a contract. The paver did not violate the contract, but came very, very, very close. Uh, and I do promise you, uh, and we'll make sure that our engineer as well adheres to this. This will not happen in 2013. So I do truly apologize. Uh, and since everyone kind of chimed in a little bit about Wawa, uh, my personal opinion is that I think that the traffic would have been extremely difficult for our community. Uh, that is a very bad intersection as it is. Uh, the property owners closed off the entrances and exits just so that people could not come in and out. So they were saying it was a quote, safety issue and I found it interesting that once there was someone else who was interested in purchasing or leasing the property, that those safety issues were no longer there. Uh, this is just a personal opinion that I also think that it would have harmed many of our businesses in this town. I think that you would have seen uh, establishments such as Manhattan Bagel, uh, Tiny the Tiny Tees, uh, the gas station, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, and numerous other places, uh, as well as the professional offices that are located behind it there. Uh, so we can take a look at, yes, this, you know, and I'll be the first one to say I agree with everyone here. Wawa is a great corporate, corporate neighbor. Uh, would love to see them in other places within the borough, but I do believe that that location was not necessarily the perfect location for them. Uh, and I do find it interesting that some establishments in the media that said, oh, gee, this would be great to have them, would be, I question what would happen if that was going to be a Walmart that was coming in. And if there would be the same feeling that if, you know, a retailer on State Street would say that this is a good thing because we're now having a Walmart. Uh, I just think that they were trying to put 10 pounds in a 5 pound bag and it wasn't going to fit. Uh, and I do hope that they look at other locations uh, within the borough that that might be more suited for them. Uh, my two cents for the evening. Oh, and before I close, Wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday and a very safe and prosperous 2013. Thank you. Any questions or uh, comments for Councilman Robinson? I would like to take this opportunity to thank him as well as uh, Councilman Davidson and uh, Borough Manager Jeff Smith for all of the work that they did with regard to the negotiations with the FOP. Without their persistence, without their work, we would not have uh, we would not have been able to reach a, a, an agreement that I think works for all of us uh, and will work for us for the next five years. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, we have come to the end of our committee reports. We now have public comment and privilege of the floor. Only because it's good enough to do it once, let's do it twice. Anyone wish to come before council at this time to address council? 
on a matter of great urgency that requires them to speak at 10.05 p.m. on the day before the end of the world. 10.10. 10. 10. Please don't make me get up. <laughs> From there, Ms. Bell. Thank you. Um, I did send emails, and based on something that Mrs. Berry said about you folks getting tons of emails, and I am sure that you do from your borough residents and obviously from those that are not in the room. How many read from? Thank I read you. it. I received it. Thank you. Did you also get my U.S. mail? No. You did not? No. I did sent not. it to and care of Borough Hall. Yes, yeah. uh, yeah. we all got it. We will get, we'll be getting that. We get If it's sent to the Borough Hall, they come out on a weekly basis, which would be they come out tomorrow. So anything that's sent to the Borough and Hall. And I pick mine up separately. Okay. We might get it tomorrow, so we'll get it tomorrow, Saturday, or Saturday. Okay, okay. and I apologize to you, Mr. Robinson, because I did not have an email for you. That was my intent for sending the U.S. mail. Appreciate it. I'll get it. I'm sorry. Is it the same content? Identical. All, All right. right. Okay. Anyone else who wishes to come before council at this time? I will entertain, entertain a motion to adjourn. So so adjourn. There we go. Uh, we are adjourned. Happy Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay.